This old wooden house built in the 1930s is about to be demolished. In fact, it is being demolished around us right now. And we have to remove this colony of bees before their home is destroyed completely. That's our challenge. And I can see the there's the entrance slot, there's on the thermal camera, and so the nest is actually well above there, it's up there, it's quite high up. So we can actually cut away this bottom portion, um, I think reasonably safely, and work our way upwards. So there's the heat signature of the hive, it's right up there. There's the entrance there, and if we move it up, there's the heat signature appearing. That should also tell us where the, the vertical section is that they are building. There's a vertical line of nails there, and they don't appear to have built that side of it, so I think we can be fairly sure that they're contained in that space. But there's another line, I can see more nails there now. Yeah, and that's, that's the right-hand side, so they are between there, between there. these two. That's the bit I'm interested in. The colony is right here. Oops. I can actually feel there's a warm spot right there. I can feel it on the wall. So the heat is coming through the wood. So they're quite up close against this. So I need to cut inside this vertical here. What can we say? Um, <laughs> Get ready for the thunder. <laughs> uh, just hope for the best, really. We'll do, do, as, do as best we can. They're, they're probably more confused than anything at the moment because they're not used to this level of activity around their colony. They're not cross yet. But it should become fairly obvious if they do get cross. You know, it's just really daylight through it so I know I've gone through We've got a nice big entrance now, guys. Probably a bit longer. Oh, there we go. First, first sign of a uh, comb. So we think the nest extends from there up to, I think, this level here. So it's not huge, but and it, I think it's all contained in this space as well. not reacting they're, they're just being really quiet apparently you know, compared to what they could be they're going crazy by now well I think the next thing is to do is to start getting some bees into the into this box here so they get the idea that this could end up being a home so let's start by shifting some bees into this box Just as a test, I'm just going to take this piece carefully and I'm just going to 
see if there's a, I'm going to check for the Queen at every opportunity because obviously she's vital to this exercise being successful. There's, there's, there's a big piece here yeah. and the rest is all narrow. There's brood on here, there's quite a lot of brood in the middle of that so I would expect to find the queen probably not too far away from that. Um, This is all probably fresh nectar and the brood, I can see brood there, there's probably brood in there as well. So if that comes in. So this is um, completely the wrong time of year to be doing this of course but we have, don't have a choice because the building is literally being demolished as we speak and so the only chance for this colony to survive is for us to remove it, um, put it into a hive and um, hopefully find, her, find the queen and overwinter them as best we can. They're going to need a lot of uh, TLC to get them through to the spring but They've shown their resilience by living in this building here, un, untreated, un, untouched for uh, an unknown number of years. Um, so I have great hopes for them as long as we can find the Queen. Okay, so we can see the whole thing now. Um, there's honey stored at the top here, as we would uh -huh. expect. Uh, nectar down below and there's quite a lot of relatively empty comb I mean there's, there's, there's some storing going on for sure um, and there's, you know there's brood down there so let's see what we can do here thank goodness they're, they're gentle bees that um, are really not taking too much umbrage of this terrible interference in their lives. Whoa, well, that's going to drop. Okay, so that's I've quite got heavy. I've it's got heavy it. on that. Okay. Yep. sort of hope they understand that we're trying to do the best for them. Yes. <laughs> this is a whole sheet of comb going right up here and I can see there's brood all the way up. There's a lot of brood in here. And that's going to be the most difficult thing to deal with because um, we've got no way of giving it any support. See if I, let's start with these narrower bits here and see if I can... Thank mm -hmm. you. 
a lot of nectar coming out of this comb, there of course, is. because they're foraging on ivy at the moment and it's coming in thick and fast. So I'll take out one of these, mm. and put it like that. I can shape nectar directly into the cells. My goodness. It's got a little bit of surface mold on it, but nothing much. It's amazing how much these things That's hold, actually. Incredible. Well, they've attached the comb to the back wall by the feel of it. This is why I don't like wearing gloves. I know it's, you know, there's the potential to get stung, but it means I can feel what's going on so much better. You can actually squeeze this as well. It's almost honey. Of honey. We'll pop that straight into the feeder. We, if we can maybe raise the level of this somewhat, mm -hmm. so that they're flying back and finding it easily. Um, I mean, I'd like to obviously get the lid on at some point. Yep. Um, in fact, quite soon. Yes. The more bees we get actually in the box, the better, you see. Yeah. Um, because then they'll signal to the others. Well, there's not actually that many bees left in no. there now. with the weather as well. Yeah, it was as though it was meant, they were meant to be saved. Okay, let's get these guys inside if we can. they like hanging on the outside of things just because it's just not familiar and it doesn't smell quite right yet I can have to cut that off after to get the roof on so.
sorry about that guys but because the bees are now coming in a higher level because they can see obviously there's a big hole there um we could actually do with this being higher yes because they might never find the entrance otherwise um i don't know how to do that we need to, well, we need to jack it up on something can we double up the no we can't double the trestle because they won't stand with each other will they uh, okay, we, we can improvise with the boards though okay i can see a way of doing it That's how we've left it for now, and um, we're going to come back in a few hours at dusk, and hopefully the bees will have found their way in. If not, we'll leave it till tomorrow and uh, tidy up the last few. So now it's a couple of days later, I've moved the bees to a safe spot where it's sheltered and they're settling into their new home. As you can see they're using the entrance quite happily. They'll be out foraging, it's a bit wet today but they're, uh, they'll still be out looking for flowers. And if we look through the top here we can see I've put in a, a kilo of fondant which they're now tucking into. We've got two bags there and uh, they, they should have enough nectar in the in the hive because we shook quite a lot back into the comb but I've topped them up with some fondant. I should keep an eye on that level. They're going to need more food over winter for sure but while the weather's reasonably warm and there's ivy in bloom then they'll be out at every opportunity bringing stores back into their hive so with any luck they'll be okay for the winter and they'll be ready to start building again in the spring i'm going to pause it 